Hi everyone, my name is Emmanuel Gouillard. I'm a Python developer at uh, Plotly in Montreal and also a member of the Scikit-Image uh, development team. Uh, so it's my first Python. And uh, I'm very excited to talk about interactive image processing with uh, two packages to which uh, I contribute to, uh, Dash and Scikit-Image. And uh, the work I'm going to present today is uh, funded by the Chan Zuckerberg Initiative, CZDI. And uh, I would like to thank uh, CZDI for their support to uh, scientific um, uh, open source software. So um, in, in science and in business, images are a very widespread source of data. Uh, in science, you have images um, and you make accurate measurements on these uh, images and you want to transform these measurements into numbers and scientific knowledge. For autonomous cars, you want to be able to detect objects and distances uh, in real time and with very good reliability. Uh, you have other kinds of uh, image applications such as remote sensing, uh, satellite imaging, for example. And in all these applications, you need to extract some information from your images. Uh, nowadays, a lot of the image processing is done through machine learning and especially deep learning uh, neural nets algorithms. And this figure uh, summarizes different tasks uh, typical of image processing. That is uh, from uh, image classification, where you want to attribute a label to the whole image. That is, you have some balloons in this image to the more complex instant segmentation, where this time you want to label all the pixels corresponding to uh, all the different kinds of objects. So here, all the different balloons. And for all this machine learning and image processing tasks, uh, you need to train your neural net with um, what's called a training set. That is, you need to have a ground truth for your images. And for this, uh, you need to build uh, yourself this uh, training set uh, thanks to image annotations. So uh, what are image annotations? Is some kind of uh, user interaction with images. Uh, for example, it can be drawing bounding boxes around objects. Uh, when you want to uh, train your algorithm for object detection, but uh, it can be also annotations for more uh, classical uh, image processing algorithms. That is, if you want to seed uh, a region growing algorithm uh, with a few pixels belonging to uh, a given object, or if you want to measure uh, lengths on um, some medical image, for example, uh, or in some applications, uh, rough boundaries like bounding boxes are not enough. You need to make a very accurate training set by delineating very uh, precisely, accurately uh, uh, all the pixels of uh, all objects here, the roads and this remote sensing image. So uh, how can we build a good image annotation um, framework with Python? Uh, this is basically the subject of my talk. And uh, for this, let me first introduce you uh, Dash. So what is Dash? It is a web framework uh, developed by Plotly uh, in order to write uh, web-based analytical applications in pure Python. So it's a Python uh, package, but uh, based on web technologies. And uh, it's open source MIT licensed. And 
Uh, the promise of Dash is that as a developer, you write uh, only code in Python. Uh, you don't need to know any JavaScript. Of course, there is a lot of JavaScript uh, running behind the scenes in Dash code, but it's not you as a developer who will write the JavaScript. So here uh, you have a code snippet, which is like a hello world uh, web application with Dash. So uh, as you see, it's pure Python. Uh, you define your app and you define the layout with the different uh, components which will appear in your app. Here uh, you have uh, a, a text input, which is a reactive component uh, into which you can add text and a div paragraph. So that's for defining a layout. And uh, after you define the callbacks, a callback is a function which is executed when one of uh, the input is modified. And in this case, when you modify the text input, it will modify the div. So as you see, it's pure Python. So this code is, of course, a really hello world uh, small application. But with Dash, you can build a really more advanced and styled app. And if you go to uh, the Dash uh, gallery of examples, you will see a lot of these different apps. So here is an example app made with Dash. And you can see that you have uh, several uh, reactive components, such as sliders here. Uh, when you change the slider, it will update your graphs, uh, the drop down, and uh, one first class component of Dash apps uh, are this uh, reactive graph. So these graphs are uh, made here with a Plotly graphing library. And you have seen that when we modify uh, the components, we can modify the graphs, but uh, graphs are also interactive in the sense that they are able to emit events like here when I select uh, these counties, this uh, will trigger a callback updating uh, this other graph. So uh, here is an another example of a quite styled Dash app. Uh, and um, so this app is actually made with Dash, but with the R language, because uh, the uh, the largest number of users of Dash uh, program with Python, but there is also a community of uh, uh, Dash users programming in R and now in Julia. So uh, to say a little bit more about uh, Dash and uh, which kind of app you can build with Dash, what kind of uh, available components do you have? You have uh, the Dash HTML components Python package, which uh, provides you all the usual HTML elements uh, which you are used to. And in the Dash core components package, you have um, interactive components, reactive components, that is, uh, the user can interact with these components, for example, uh, sliders, drop downs, radio buttons. Uh, I've shown you in the app uh, that uh, reactive charts are a very important part of Dash apps, and we'll talk more about it later. You also have an interactive data table library, um, more specialized library for bio, for example. And for uh, Dash components, the component factory, which is used by Dash, is uh, React JS framework, meaning that uh, if you have a React JavaScript library and you have thousands of them on NPM, the equivalent uh, for JavaScript of PyPy, then uh, you can uh, very easily bundle it into Dash. And that's something that's used a lot by Dash developers who want to develop uh, quickly uh, some uh, specialized components. So in order to build an image annotation component for Dash, uh, we used uh, this idea of reusing uh, existing React JavaScript code and um, to make a quick uh, proof of concept for image annotation. So uh, we 
used the React Sketch uh, JavaScript library, which itself is based on the Fabric JS library, and we built uh, this uh, image annotation component. I'm showing you here a video. So it gives you like uh, uh, an, uh, a window on which uh, you can uh, draw, you can draw uh, squiggles like here, rectangles and so on. And uh, here when you press the uh, segmentation button, uh, there is a callback reading a JSON string with your annotations and uh, you can use this geometry of annotations in, in your callbacks. Uh, so we wrote this Dash Canvas package, uh, which is also a MIT license and you can install it from PyPy. And uh, it has quite a simple API, as you can see here. It takes uh, either a file name or an image string for the background image, and then uh, you have some control for the kind of buttons which uh, you want to have as drawing tools and uh, also how you would like the annotations to look like. Um, so here you can see lines and rectangles and also uh, freehand paths. And inside the Dash Canvas package, you also have some utility functions uh, in order to be able to process your annotations uh, in a, an easy way, uh, thanks to uh, the scikit-image package, which I will be talking about just after. So uh, after we had written this uh, proof of concept package um, of Dash Canvas for annotating images, we thought, can we port this uh, image annotation functionalities to the plotly graphing libraries since there are already a uh, very large number of users using plotly? So, plotly is in fact the um, web based uh, Python library which has the highest uh, number of downloads. And so, um, Plotly is already uh, quite interactive, like I have a, a small example here um, of a plot uh, where you are introspecting a set of data along different dimensions and uh, you can select uh, some part of the data and you see that it's also selected in the other subplots. You can uh, take a look at your data thanks to advanced hover information but uh, we didn't used to have um, uh, annotation tools. What we had was a layout shape object, for example, lines or rectangles. So this is um, a demo of uh, uh, shapes uh, with Plotly. So here you have a line shape overlaid uh, over an image and uh, it's possible to move the shape, it's editable and when you do it uh, you will have the intensity profile of uh, the image which updates. So this is a way uh, to uh, annotate images but and this is already available with uh, the current version, the current release of Plotly but uh, you cannot uh, with this UI, add a new shape. However, uh, this is coming with the next version of uh, Plotly, which uh, will give you uh, a mode bar with uh, all these uh, drawing tools, like uh, open and closed paths, rectangles, uh, circles, and so on. And so uh, this uh, when you draw these shapes, it will also emit layout data events for Dash apps and you will be able to capture the geometry of annotation. So um, it should be released uh, in one or two weeks, but I cannot resist uh, just showing you a little demo. So let me start a rectangle. I want to do a, on the truck and building. Okay, I switch to another 
image, etc. And if I go back to my image, uh, the annotations have been saved because uh, a callback has captured them and stored them in the store. So uh, this is what is coming in one or two weeks and uh, we will have all these drawing tools available in uh, uh, the Plotly graphing library. But uh, so now that uh, we will have this uh, geometry of, of annotations, what will we do with the annotations? So in a few cases, you can just dump all these annotations into your machine learning model and uh, don't care more about the annotations, but in a lot of cases you need uh, to do some pre-processing or some processing of some form. And uh, for this we are lucky that uh, Dash is written in Python and with Dash you get also all the Python scientific stack uh, because uh, this scientific stack is really uh, batteries included. Here I've just uh, put a screenshot of a Dash application using scikit-learn to visualize results of uh, data classification in low dimension. So this was an example with uh, scikit-learn, but here in order to process image annotations we will be using uh, scikit-image, which is like a sister package of uh, scikit-learn but for image processing. And all this uh, scikit package Packages manipulate uh, NumPy array objects. Uh, the numerical data array is really the common object of all these uh, scientific packages. So what is scikit-image? It's a toolbox for scientific image processing in Python. It's uh, open source. Uh, it's a library, meaning that it's not an end-user application. Uh, it's meant to be used in your own packages or in um, uh, other uh, image processing applications or in your scripts. And it focuses more on uh, scientific images uh, than, for example, um, uh, advertising or uh, other kinds uh, of images. Uh, we don't have Instagram filters, for example. And um, it's able to process both 2D and 3D images because uh, in science, like in MAY or CT, you have a lot of uh, 3D image modalities. Um, a question which is often asked is uh, what's the difference between uh, scikit image and OpenCV? So, um, scikit image is uh, more for uh, science and uh, it also focuses more maybe on um, documentation. It has a quite uh, progressive documentation on uh, the website with a, a gallery of examples, uh, which is quite extensive. And um, also some tutorials for beginners. It's a it's a Python native also library, so the API resembles very much the API of other Python packages. So if you're a Python user, you might feel more comfortable start starting with scikit-image uh, rather than other libraries uh, like OpenCV, which uh, is uh, which has Python bindings but is written in uh, C++ or C. Uh, on the other hand, uh, OpenCV is uh, most of the time faster than scikit-image thanks to very optimized um, C++ code. Uh, but we are uh, working hard to uh, bridge this gap and to make uh, scikit-image uh, faster and faster. So in terms of uh, contributors, we are lucky to have a large group of contributors, so many thanks to all of them, and uh, the number of core maintainers is uh, much smaller, but if you're interested in contributing, uh, you will be very welcome, and we're actively looking for um, uh, a range of uh, people as diverse as possible. So here is um, 
a small code uh, showing you uh, some first steps, uh, another hello world, but this time with scikit image. And uh, you see uh, that you import some modules and then that you read uh, an image file uh, and you open it as an empire array. And then once you have your numerical array object in, then you will call a function from scikit image on uh, the image array. It will return you an image array. And then you will call another function on this new array. Uh, you will get another array and so on and so forth to build your image processing pipeline. Um, so how can you use this uh, scikit image functions uh, for image uh, annotations? Actually, uh, a lot of people often use scikit image only for uh, a handful of functions uh, which are useful to the application. Unsurprisingly, the most widely used function of scikit image is this io.imread function to read numpy arrays from file names. Uh, but you also have a wide variety of functions for uh, manipulating color and exposure, uh, also geometrical transforms, like let's say you're annotating your image uh, to correct um, for a slanted horizon from the annotation uh, inside a callback in a dash app, it will be calling one single uh, scikit image function, which would be the transform.rotate uh, function to, to correct for this uh, horizon. And um, last example in this slide is drawing and measure tools, uh, where you want to uh, measure some quantities from your image. And uh, here is a portion of the code of the app I showed just before where uh, you want to measure the intensity profile uh, from a line. So in the Dash app, when you get the geometry of the line, what you get is the endpoints. And if you want the whole profile, then you can call this uh, schemage.draw.line function, which will give you uh, all uh, the coordinates of uh, the pixels on the line. So this is the kind of utility functions uh, which the Dash Canvas package relies a, a lot upon. Uh, so thanks to all these uh, algorithms, uh, the Dash Canvas code is actually quite small uh, since uh, it uses uh, scikit image for manipulating uh, uh, images and uh, the geometry of uh, objects in images. But besides this utility functions, you also have uh, quite advanced algorithms in scikit image. Uh, I've put here uh, some examples. F for example, uh, restoration and filtering, if you want to remove some noise from images, feature extraction, uh, segmentation that is labeling the pixels of objects or some advanced measures on images. And uh, scikit image itself is not a deep learning package, mostly because of arch architecture constraints, but uh, it's a great tool both for pre-processing your image uh, before uh, launching a deep uh, neural net uh, algorithm or also for uh, doing a lot of the post-processing where you want to um, compute measurements on objects, for example. And uh, scikit image, for example, is used quite a lot in the data augmentation uh, libraries, once again, for, for deep learning. Uh, for more traditional uh, machine learning uh, uh, algorithms, uh, there is a possibility in scikit image to extract features, and uh, this uh, feature extractors can be um, both uh, based on points of interest, such as corners of your image, or it can be features of little patches in the image. And I have uh, one demo to show you, uh, which is here, where uh, there was uh, this image, so here it's again this uh, dash canvas 
uh, annotation tool where uh, I want to extract this lady and to remove the background and um, so I'm drawing and after I will call remove background and uh, you see that it has removed the background quite nicely and the way it works is that uh, Psychic Image computes a super pixel uh, segmentation of the image into little patches and uh, then it computes features from uh, the patches uh, uh, under the annotations and patches far from the annotations and it calls a random forest classifier from scikit learn in order to learn how to classify object and background patches and this is how this segmentation is made um, so uh, i want to show you maybe a last demo uh, showing you this uh, image uh, annotation tools that we are uh, developing with uh, this time the Plotly graphing library. So here you have a Plotly, uh, but it's a dev version. And so you have here this uh, drawing button, which allows you to draw uh, like here, uh, open pass. And uh, so here I'm tracing a very rough outline of uh, this organ in a medical image uh, radiography, I think. And when I press this magic scissors button, I call uh, dash callback, which uh, uh, calls uh, scikit image active contour algorithm. And um, then uh, you have this tight uh, outline corresponding to the segmentation. So uh, in order to uh, close this presentation, I would like to say that uh, uh, both uh, Plotly Dash and Scikit Image have a strong uh, effort on documentation. They are all based on examples. Here is uh, a snapshot of uh, the Scikit Image gallery where you have all this uh, thumbnails and you can click on one thumbnails and you have an example about uh, one specific image processing application and uh, the, the, the code and the result and you have the same uh, with uh, Plotly and with Dash, a lot of examples uh, to get started so uh, I hope uh, that uh, you uh, now wish to uh, uh, try these tools and uh, maybe I'll see you on the community forums. We have one for Plotly and Dash and uh, another one on uh, for Scikit Image. Uh, and uh, I would love to be in touch. Uh, so if you want to be in touch, I'm on Twitter. And here is again my Twitter handle. So thank you very much.